Greetings from CSI Delhi branch, EMED News and Heart Care Foundation of India. I am Dr. K.K. Agarwal. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. K.K. We have with us Dr. Rakesh Yadav, who is the Sub-Dean Academics and Additional Professor, Department of Cardiology, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Welcome to our show, Rakesh. Hello, sir. Uh, what we are going to discuss is, uh, for an average, useful to a technician, nurse, GP, physician, and a DM student in cardiology, how to choose a stent. I am not talking about when to choose a stent. Once we have chosen that a stent is required, now how do we choose a stent and what are the precautions we should take? Why I am asking this question is because general perception is go and get a stent done. Question is, do you, you, I need a stent? Stenting done. But nobody talks about how to choose a stent. Uh, that is a very important topic because every stent is not a same stent and every patient for stenting is not the same patient. So what, what we believe that there should be three criteria for choosing the stent. First is patient characteristic, second important thing the lesion characteristic and third important thing the cost effective. So three important things because the stunt cost varies from 10,000 rupees to 95,000 rupees and new stunts costing more than 2.5 lakh rupees. So first the patient characteristic which differentiate how to choose stunt and that is very true that if you have to tell me whether it should be bare metal or drug looting, there is no doubt that drug looting stunts are better than a bare metal stunt. There is no doubt but the cost difference is enormous. However, in certain group you can still choose because the cost is less with a bare metal stunt and in which group in patient character you should choose it. If it is a non-diabetic patient, if the vessel size is more than 4 mm, it is a big vessel, you have to do a short stenting. Patient is going to have some major surgery within a short period of time. The patient was sent for PSE, he has required a surgery and there is a strong positive thallium. Patient is quite symptomatic, you have to stunt the patient. And you think that we have to stop the antiplatelet after a month during the surgery. So at that situation, I still feel that bare metal stents are safer than drug looting stent because with drug looting stent you require to give at least three months of dual antiplatelet, preferably for one year. And people say in older stent you should continue lifelong. And with the bare metal stent you can stop after one month dual antiplatelet. So at present the role of bare metal stent is in if it's a very large vessels, more than four millimeter vessels. And so, so out of a hundred patients who are requiring stent, on an average, how many? can be tackled with a bare metal stent? Um, roughly if you can say because if cost is not a constraint. If cost is not a constraint. If cost is not a constraint, I think it will be less than 5%. And if cost is a constraint? If cost is a constraint then I think this ratio will increase to 50%. 50%? 50%, 50 that means 50% of the patients can be, can be because managed. Because what is happening, the bare metal average stent is costing 15 to 20,000 rupees. And the drug looting stent, if you if you compare a good 40 stent, to 60. it is about 40 to 90. Okay. So, cost is definitely a, has a role in Indian uh, subcontinental. Okay, so if I choose a bare metal, if there are different types of metals now? Uh, I think the cobalt chromium should be preferred over the stainless steel because it is proven that cobalt chromium has less rich stenosis as compared to stainless steel. So, when stand. I choose a, a metallic stand, it has to be cobalt chromium? Yes, okay. cobalt chromium. Now, for next thing comes is, suppose I go for a, a, a drug eluting stand. Now I talk about the polymer, then I talk about the polymer free and the drug. And absorbable, yes. Absor and then absorbable and non absorbable. Non absorbable. So if I have to choose a drug, do I have a preference for a drug? At present I think uh, uh, all the three drugs are, has got appro approximately equal roles. So, so uh, it, the drug does not, uh, at present the uh, drug do not matter a lot. So whichever drug fine. Yes. When it comes to polymer. Polymer free are definitely better than with polymer. That okay. is no doubt about it because the it is being proven that stent thrombosis is less than in polymer uh, free, and the late uh, uh, late loss is also less in polymer free. So, so if I have to choose between polymer and polymer free, then I will choose polymer free stent. Polymer free. If I have to, if there is a polymer, the type of polymer also matters. At present, I don't think the type of polymer has got 
more in much significance in choosing this stent it is a polymer free or Poly uh, with polymer, polymer free or with polymer and uh, people say that there are certain stent which has polymer free has got a better role but overall clinical data doesn't show significant difference between these varieties now if it is a polymer free what will happen to the stent stent there is a metallic stent say say there is a cobalt platinum the the, the metal will be there hmm. metal will be there the only the platform of the uh, drug which is how the drug will stay over the yes yes and polymer it is it is it is uh, it is proven that polymer has got disadvantage in drug lutein no, no. stand when when i put I, I, when i don't put a polymer how will the drug stay over the metal yes. drug will stay because the technology has advanced there's a lot of technology by which without polymer you can uh, make the drug to stay over the stand okay so uh, if i have to choose a drug first of all is, is there has to be a metal there has to be a drug drug <coughs> and there should be no polymer no polymer yes okay now if i have to have a drug absorbable stand what will be that uh, bio absorbable stand matlab you have, the metal is not there you have asked a very good question we all cardiologists believe that if we can make such type of stand and it is all in the market however these stands has got limitations uh, because they say you cannot uh, dilate it with a high pressure at present they don't recommend in very tortuous vessel so they have got certain limitation at present but you are very correct that in future i think in next 5 years all these stand will be a bio absorbable stand because they have got definite advantage because they what they do they dilate the vessel and gradually the stand metal will dissolve so the normal endothelium will allow to be grown okay now does it also matter when i talk about the metal the thickness of the metal yes yes thickness more thick stent is in metal more chances of restenosis so it has to be thinner thinner but you make this stent uh, more thinner the radial strength and everything will be hampered so it has to be an appropriate ratio of the thinness of the stent and the strength of the stent so lesser the metal load in a stent less will be the restenosis that is a proven thing okay so ultimately it comes to one is metal then it appropriates thinness, thinness and thickness of the metal yes. then if possible no polymer no polymer and any drug any drug any between drug. these three drugs and, and if possible if you have a, and if you have an indication where biobsorbable can be used you should be of choice and i think it is a it is a future of this stent okay. all this stent anything else is the designing of the mesh and yes, all yes yes designing designing does matter the third generation stent which is produced by the um, uh, the uh, the uh, the good companies you require three important thing in the stent when you are delivering the stent the first thing should be the deliverability of the stent the trackability of the stent because the in straight lesion it is very simple to do but once it come a tortuous lesion hmm. so the stent design also matter but what i believe the good stent if you categorize the good stent third generation stent i think all stent is now having a good trackability so for trackability issue if you see that all the good stunts so there deliverability some should be trackable, trackable it should be go easily pushable easily pushable and it should be able to modulate itself Mod to enter inside according to the process of the vessel wall now the last thing comes is now size and length what the size I, and the length so what adequate size and ad adequate length is required uh, uh, that is the most important thing i see hmm. choosing this stunt but the lesion characteristic is more important in choosing uh, as compared to choosing the stent if you over over dilate the stent if you put an stent which is a larger than the vessel size it will cause more damage to the vessel if you put a stent which is smaller than the vessel size thrombosis there is more chances of some thrombosis as well as there is more chances of uh, late stent restenosis so in my belief choosing the ideal size of the stent is the most important variable for long term outcome and as well as short term outcome and the length also length also initially what will believe in a non dragluting stent you should cover edge by edge the disease part but it is a standard teaching with dragluting mm. stent you required at least 5 mm a normal segment to be covered and 5 mm a normal segment to be covered so 10 mm extra extra this is an ideal teaching but in practical term we always say that 1 or 2 mm if you can Uh, have a landing zone of a normal vessel it is sufficient at present i think no cardiologist is putting a very long stent it's a 14 mm uh, lesion then you are putting 28 mm stent i think at present no cardiologist is doing that so But so normally we, we the stents are available up to 40 now a 48 is also you can 48 is 40 also available. available 48 48 so up to so uh, uh, two smaller stents versus one larger stent i will always believe 
one larger stent because larger at stent. the site of overlapping restosis doubles that is a normal phenomenon so it is always better to have a one long one larger, than putting two yeah, or three absolutely, smaller ones absolutely absolutely even if in between the space is normal in between suppose if there is an in between space of 15 mm then i will try to put the two smaller stent in between this space is 5 mm then it is let, better to let it is better to cover with a single stent because you know anyway you have fiber above and fiber below up to 10 mm of a normal space i think i said and the second important thing at what pressure you are deploying this stent and at present everybody believe that these all stents should be de deployed with a high pressure between 20 to 14 atmospheric pressure it should not be so as so, so one is one you have decided an adequate size now i'll put down a very uh, tricky uh, question often people there is a myth amongst gp and there is also a myth amongst the public that you take a 40 mm stand cut it into two mm. and charge for two mm. it's not possible no 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 it is not possible it is not it possible it is at present i think nobody will do it i know it's not possible no, no, it technically is, not. is it possible or not we are not talking about no, no, then, you, then you have to remove this stand from the balloon which is not then possible. you have to mount this stand on balloon i think it is not possible it is not possible no. so practically it is not possible no, no, it's no. only a myth that is only okay. if you can now, see when you have when i have to now put in a stand i have decided that i have chosen a stand which is a cobalt chromium uh, cobalt platinum or cobalt chromium then i have taken a no polymer i have taken the best of the strength yeah. adequate size and an adequate uh, length. length now my question comes here that when i put when i am putting in a stand so i have three things so i have to prepare the bed then yes. i have to put the stand yes. and then i have to after the stand i have to reposition it with a high pressure Yes. Dilatation. Yes. So there are three procedures in yes, putting yes, in the stand. Yes. Yes. It's not like just putting the stand and coming out. No, no, okay, no. no. In a pre, in a, in a pre-stenting preparation of the bed, what are the factors involved? What I always believe that if it is uh, suppose eighty percent lesion, uh, smooth lesion, non-calcific lesion, um, I will go for a direct stenting. Okay. There's no. So you may not do a pre-stent. But uh, one thing is very important that before. choosing the size i will always like to give nitroglycerin to dilate the corneas because many okay. time what happens especially a right coronary you have done an angiogram you find this is 2.5 mm vessel hmm. give him 100 microgram of nitroglycerin and see after 2 minutes the vessel will grow to 3.5 mm hmm. so at that situation if you have put a 2.5 mm stent okay. then you, so you will always like to see i i will maximum. always like to give nitroglycerin before choosing the size of the vessel that is my practice if it is a difficult chronic lesion if it is a calcific lesion 99% lesion slightly longish lesion you don't know the vessel size then i will always like to pre dilate with a 2 mm or 2.5 mm balloon will prepare a bed give a nitroglycerin because in calcific lesion sometimes what happen you have dil you are dilating with 2.5 mm balloon and the waste is not going you have gone to 18 mm waste you are not able to break the waste and suppose you have put an stent and you are not able to waste the break then you have no option you cannot do rota nothing you cannot do anything so it is always better seeing the lesion it is a very calcific lesion you think is a hard lesion it is always wise to prepare a bed it will okay. always so once you have prepared the bed now you have sent it i have sent it okay, you have sent it now post stenting high pressure dilatation uh, i what is my practice to and modulate think, the stent to the yes, size yes. of the vessel the important thing is if you have chosen a right site you will not require to increase the size of the stent that's why i am telling pre dilate the uh, prepare the bed give adequate nitrogen but in a tortuous vessel you may require sometimes sometimes sometime what happen that you have chosen that suppose 3 mm stent you have dilated at 40 atmospheric pressure and you don't think that waste has gone and you have chosen a 30 mm stent i will not like to go with that balloon with high pressure what i will take as a site where there is in adequate expansion i will take a smaller balloon yes sir yes. and then i will dilate to high pressure selective so selective Select, dilatation selective. is making it to the size of the vessel bilkul size of the vessel now there are uh, when you do a pci there are chances that patients may have so if i do high sensitivity trop i or trop 3 they may be positive so called microvascular yes yes do occur yes and now they they say that every patient of a pci uh, before doing a pci do a remote uh, ischemic preconditioning you in, uh, in a peripheral remote uh, is there any trial going on and yes there's a trial going on but uh, i think the result is still not out people people say you are absolutely correct that preconditioned myocardium has less rise of enzymes that is very true mm. so that people say that if you have triple vessel disease and you have a mi if there is collateral you will have a less damage and young patient who has no disease smokers sudden rupture of clot cause more damage when when pre when a uh, remote uh, peripheral 
preconditioning, ischemic preconditioning works in reducing the infarct size. It also works in cabbage. Why should not it work in a stable angina if it is done every day? The important thing is that then you require a trial that before PCI you should preconditioning and then you should do a PCI versus a person who are going. That this trial is available. Yes. This trial is yes. available uh, with PCI. It is available yes. with renal dysfunction. Yes. It is available with cabbage. Yeah. I'm only trying to say if if remote preconditioning is done in a stable patient every day, who is not undergoing. I'm talking about who is not undergoing a PCI. Uh, PCI. Will this work? Will, I think will, will this production of NO uh, every day if it is done for 40 days, 50 days, well, 60 days? Will it ultimately work in developing collaterals? The literature says it will work. It will work. So this is there's no doubt about it. So there, there, there is a, uh, uh, another phenomena available, another methodology available for what, such cases. What I think you always promote that yoga increases the collateral. Yes, absolutely. It works. If I add it into it, it works. If I add with yoga. That's why work. I say if you discuss, but it works. It works. I believe it works. Okay. So uh, anything else you want to add? How to choose a job? How to uh, choose a stent? The most important thing as we have discussed is then when you are putting the stent, I think never put a stent in hurry. Always measure the vessel size adequately. Always choose the good stent because once you are putting a stent and you have chooses a bad stent and if you are in mesh, then it will be a very difficult for you to retrieve everything. So my suggestion to everybody is that never take a stenting lightly and never disrespect the coronary arteries. People have tendency, they have taken a stent and they are giving they are very rapid, the stent is not going, they are pushing very hard. Don't do these all things because this always causes a dissection as distal as, as the proximal part. Be gentle with your guiding, be gentle with your delivering this stand. If you are not able to deliver this stand, remove this stand, take a balloon, prepare a bed. There is nothing to shy. There is a tendency that you have done 200 angioplasty and then you are very confident. What we have seen that the maximum complication is done by a confident cardiologist because they misses this step. Never miss this step in preparing the bed and giving nitroglycerin, choosing the adequate size, seeing what is happening, what should be the, if you are, if you have a doubt in measuring the length, always put, because the new uh, wires have a markers, they have 30 millimeter or 20 millimeter radio opaque tips, measure the length of the stand with these things. So if you are doing these small, small steps, I think you will decrease your complications of stenting the patients. So what Dr. Rakesh Yadav says is that stenting is not simple. It's not like go put in a stand no, no. and come out. It's an art which yes. has to be learned. You require an adequate number of stenting procedures before you can decide. Don't be in haste. Don't take it lightly. Stenting is, a, a, is an art which has to be learned. So let's uh, thanks Rakesh thank to be here with us. Thank you. And that's all for today. We'll come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank you.